All right, let's take a look at the starting 11 from Jurgen Klopp's first game at Liverpool, a nil-nil draw at Tottenham in October 2015. Little did we know that Klopp would be lifting the European Cup against the same opposition four years later. Simon Mingley. Simon Mingley is probably spending every waking minute crying into his hand. This is a man who has sat around on the bench for two years, watching two Champions League finals pass him by, and now, after finally leaving for Club Bruges in search of first-team football, Alisson gets injured two weeks later. Yeah, Mingley was the number one keeper under Brendan Rodgers, and initially under Jurgen Klopp. But yeah, nah, he's now 31, and stuck out in Belgium at Club Rouge, trying to repair a career that effectively died a slow and painful death. Nathaniel Klein. You have to feel sorry for Nathaniel Klein. Back in 2015, he was Liverpool's first choice right back and looking to cement his place in the England squad. Fast forward four years later, he's been plagued by injuries, lost his place to Trent Alexander-Arnold, spent six months alone at Bournemouth while his teammates lived to the Champions League and now he's out for the rest of the season with the cruciate. I know he's only 28 years old, but I can safely say, hand on heart, that this man will never play a single minute of international football again in his life. Martin Skirtle. Martin Skirtle is not at the best of times since leaving Liverpool. He'd be booted out of the club at the end of Jurgen Klopp's first season, told to look for new work after giving nearly a decade of his life to Liverpool. What followed was three bang average seasons at Fenerbahce where he won absolutely nothing and now the 34-year-old Slovakian centre-half has just quit Atalanta after only three weeks. Mamadou Sakho. Mamadou Sakho is no doubt going to look back on his career and wonder what the hell happened. This man is the youngest player to ever captain PSG. He was an £18 million signing for Liverpool in 2013, you know back when those sort of fees actually meant something. As as opposed to it just being loose change, you might chuck at Dominic Solanke's head. He should have been part of the France squad which lifted the World Cup, had he fulfilled his potential. But no, he didn't. He fell out of favour at Anfield and was eventually sold to Crystal Palace for 26 million quid. This is a lad with nearly 30 caps for France under his belt, and yet he's spending the prime years of his career stuck in annual relegation battles with the likes of Scott Dan for a teammate, Alberto Moreno. This man is just a walking bag of mistakes. This was supposed to be the next great left back, a 12 million pound arrival from Sevilla. He smashed home a stunning strike in a 3 0 win at White Hart Lane, and then it all fell apart. Part. I'm not sure how this man managed to last half a decade at Anfield. He had the concentration of a teapot and effectively cost the club a Europa League. Some people did question whether some kid from a relegated Hull City team could ever dislodge him. Christ above comparing Andrew Robertson to Alberto Moreno is like comparing a Ferrari to a car made out of goddamn milk cartons. He's currently 27 and playing for Villarreal. Let's hope he since cut out the errors for their sake. Lucas Leva, a cult hero at Liverpool having lasted 10 years at the club. He eventually left in 2017 where he signed for Lazio in a £5 million deal. He's since won both the Supercoppa and Copa Italia so it seems to be going well enough for him. Emre Chan. It feels like Emre Chan has been around forever. It's mad to think he's still only 25. Again, this was a man being talked about by Liverpool fans from the moment he arrived and yes, I know he lasted 4 years and made over 160 appearances but was he ever really that good? He became yet another freebie signing at Juventus in 2018 and looks like he's slowly being edged towards the exit door by another free transfer from England. James Milner. Absolutely incredible signing. James Milner had only just arrived from Man City that summer in such a first team football. The man has played 181 times for the club, scored 22 goals, been asked to play 7 positions and got his reward with the Champions League medal. What a free transfer signing he was. Adam Lallana. A signing that had Southampton fans foaming at the mouth. I'll be honest, I was surprised Adam Lallana was still there when Jurgen Klopp took over considering he was appalling during his first season. But no, under Klopp the man became an instrumental figure, netting 8 goals from midfield during the 16-17 campaign. Then the injuries came and he hasn't been the same since and should really be sold. Philippe Coutinho. Another player who probably wishes he'd never left Anfield. Since forcing his way out to Barcelona 18 months ago, he's returned to Anfield only to lose 4-0, watched his former teammates lift a 6th European Cup while he's hopped from the Barcelona bench to a humiliating loan deal out of Bayern Munich. Poor old Coutinho. Divac Origi. Alright, hands up. Who saw Divac Origi scoring in a Champions League final? What a story this is. From Jurgen Klopp booting him out to Wolfsburg on a loan deal, to dragging him back into the fold, watching him score dramatic goals in the derby as well as in Europe. Yeah, the man might only ever have scored 29 goals in 5 years at the club, but fair play. Some of them were far more important than the likes of Luis Suarez ever managed in a red shirt.